Hello everybody, my name is Charlie and welcome back to a brand new Doctor Who YouTube video. So, Christmas specials ranked. So before I get into this video, I'd just like to say I'm sorry I haven't been publishing videos very recently. It's been quite chaotic since obviously it's nearly Christmas, which is very exciting. So I've been much busier with other things like, well, you know, what, what you normally do at Christmas, watch Christmas films, and in my case, Doctor Who Christmas specials, which is why I'm doing this video, and um, we're actually... Well, I'm actually going to be moving in a few days' time, so I've been very busy packing and cleaning and things like that, so that's why I've not done many videos recently. Anyway, Christmas specials ranked. So, currently there have been 15 Christmas and New Year, and yes, I'm including the New Year specials, released since 2005. These include The Return of Doctor Mysterio, The Doctor, The Widow and the Wardrobe, The Runaway Bride, End of Time Part 1, The Next Doctor, The Time of the Doctor, Resolution, A Christmas Carol, Twice Upon a Time, The End of Time Part to The Christmas Invasion, The Husbands of River Song, Last Christmas, The Snowmen, and Voyage of the Damned. So yes, there's quite a lot of them. There haven't been any in Classic Who, these are all in New Who so far. There was kind of one in the first Doctor's era called The Feast of Stephen, but I'm not really counting that because it's not technically a Christmas special. It was just like episode 9 of the Daleks Master Plan or something like that. So anyway, yes, I'm going to be ranking all 15 of these from worst to best. Um, I won't be saying my percentage this time because... I don't know, it's quite hard to actually pinpoint what percentage I'd give these, but um, yeah, in my opinion, Christmas specials, I've just been watching all of them recently, and um, I've not liked them as much as I usually do, actually. I think the ones I like, I like more, and the ones I don't like, I dislike even more. So yes, also I will be including New Year specials, and I'll be splitting End of Time Parts 1 and 2, because I have very varying opinions on the two parts. So yes, I hope you enjoy this video, and feel free to share your rankings of these 15 Christmas specials in the comments. Sorry for that really long intro, let's get into this. So, 15th. The Return of Doctor Mysterio. This shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone, because it's really not a very good story. I used to like this, but now, now I really don't. It has some interesting ideas with Harmony Shoal. I get what they were trying to do with that arc, but it didn't really take off, and, you know, we kind of saw that it failed in Husbands of River Song. Um, the superhero genre in Doctor Who was okay, but the, the romance aspect of it was very boring and distracting from the actual plot, which, by the way, wasn't very good, because it's very clunky and uninteresting, I just didn't really... I don't know, this episode just typically vibe with me, I, I don't really understand it. In 14th place, The Doctor, The Widow and The Wardrobe. So, um, yeah, this is kind of a pointless message in a way, you know, it, it's deliberately trying to send a message like, you know, oh, this person's a single mother, and you know, that's kind of what the story's all about, which I don't really like, I just want to see the Doctor defeat some aliens, you know, I don't really want all of that. Um, and the plot is pretty stupid, actually, you know, it has these weird tree people and the pointless Androzani callbacks just to get more classic reviewers, it's stupid. The side characters are, are very annoying and whiny, actually, I don't really like Madge Arwell or her two children who aren't the best, to be honest, and the only saving grace for this is the 11th Doctor, who absolutely shines in the story, he is amazing, but that is about it, and it doesn't really save the story from being absolutely awful, it's terrible. Now onto one that I don't hate, but I still don't really like that a whole lot much, um, Donna is very annoying and not funny. In season 4 she's brilliant, yes, but currently in this she's awful, I really don't like her. This should have been a companion story, definitely. The Rachnos is an okay villain, very underrated I think, but mm, still not amazing. However, it is a light-hearted funny story and it does provide some setup for season 4 Donna, which I do appreciate because she becomes amazing in season 4, and without this episode she probably wouldn't have become a companion actually. 12th place, The Next Doctor. The Cybermen are pretty cool in this, I suppose. They are, you know, brought back um, after not being seen in, since the Season 2 finale, which is pretty cool. Um, it, the huge Cyberman, I used to think it was actually pretty cool, but when you think about it, it's actually pretty cheesy and it's got quite bad effects. Um, the Jackson Lake, you know, him thinking he's the Doctor storyline, starts off compelling, and then it's just a bit boring and kind of doesn't really go anywhere, and it has a very meandering plot that, like I just said, it kind of leads nowhere, and... I know, lots of it is filler. It's filler, filler, filler after filler. There's loads of it, honestly. And that's why it's lower down. Now onto stories that I would say I like, but don't like a whole lot. Um, 11th place, The End of Time Part 1. The worst part of The End of Time. The Master Resurrection is very sloppily written. That is why this is so low down. I really don't like it. It's like Russell T Davies just thought, alright, how are we going to resurrect the Master? Let's just throw in some random magical sci-fi stuff and hope everyone understands it. 
people saw right through that trick RTD. It, yeah, it wasn't very good. The Master is very good in this, don't get me wrong. He's much better than he was in the Season 3 finale. A very great acting as well, you know, he acts like all crazy and he has superpowers. It's, it's pretty cool, actually. And Wilfred Mott is pretty amazing companions. Great cliffhanger with, um, as well with, obviously, the Time Lords coming back. That's a pretty amazing cliffhanger. And, but the plot feels a bit strange and unneeded plot elements added, like the Immortality Gate. That was, that wasn't really needed. It was kind of set up for the Tenth Doctor going into the Radiation Chamber in Part 2. That's around it, to be honest. Alright then. Tenth place, the Christmas Invasion, the very first Christmas special on this list. Um, the Tenth Doctor's introduction episode, this is, and, it's alright, you know, it's not the best introduction episode, um, it's one of the worst actually. The plot is filled with lots of filler, because the Tenth Doctor doesn't wake up until like the last 10 minutes, and even then he's not amazing to be honest. I don't really like the Tenth Doctor at his start, he gets better and better throughout his run, but at the start, Season 2 especially, I don't really like him to be honest. Um, he gets better in Season 3 definitely, and he's amazing in Season 4, but right now, yeah, he's, he's not amazing. Um, it has darker elements as well, like, you know, Harriet Jones firing a nuke at the, um, the aliens, and then the ten Tenth Doctor saying a speech about how awful humans are because of that, and it was, it was actually quite, you know, dark, especially for a Christmas episode, which is supposed to be pretty fun and cheery. That surprised me a bit. Um, but either way, aside from that, it's a very light-hearted and funny episode, and it's a bit cheesy at times, but, I mean, you know, who cares? It's a Doctor Who Christmas special, what do you expect? Um, ninth place, The Husbands of River Song, the other, the, the better Harmony Shoal episode. Um, it's got lots and lots of plot filler, may I just say first. Um, River is hilarious though, a great reintroduction to her, we haven't really seen her properly since the name of the Doctor. Um, it's also very sad and emotional, like the end scenes with the Doctor and River on Derillion, the last time they see each other before. You know, Silence in the Library, Forest of the Dead, that's really good. Um, and it kind of closes off the whole River Song arc. Um, we can see what Harmony Shaw, you know, I can see what Harmony Shaw was going for, that whole arc, but it just didn't really pull it off that well, and it just kind of sort, you know, it kind of went as a bit of a mess. It's a, it's a good idea, executed pretty badly in my opinion. By the way, it's an alright story though. Now we're on to the middle part of the list. Um, Last Christmas in 8th place. Last Christmas, I... I really like the story, but I don't know, all the other stories in this list, the remaining ones, are just slightly better than it. You know, it's, it's pretty good, but mm, it's not awful. Um, it's got a pretty cool villain with the kind of face face huggers. Um, it's got, like, putting people in dream states, and it's quite weird and trippy with, like, the layers of dreams. I, I think that whole idea is pretty cool, actually. Um, and it's it's pretty um, sad, actually, with Clara and Danny, and Clara going into the dream state, she wakes up and she's really old, but actually that's just a dream. <laughs> that whole end bit was a bit strange, to be honest. But um, yeah, the whole, this whole scene with Clara and Danny, they are, they are actually really sad. Um, but yeah, it's actually a pretty compelling plot with lots of mystery, like, why are these people actually here? What are they doing? Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty good. Seventh place, The Snowmen. I did not expect this to be higher than last Christmas, but after a rewatch, I did think this is actually a bit better than it. It's pretty good. Um, better version of Clara, may I just say. The two versions of Clara we see, aside from the main Clara, are infinitely better than actual Clara, in my opinion. I have nothing against actual Clara. She's brilliant. But this Clara, she is amazing. She would have been such a good companion, and I was so annoyed when she died. But there we go. Um, the Great Intelligence is... Alright, you know, it's, it's actually a pretty good villain and provides some setup for Bells of St. John, and eventually Name of the Doctor. Um, the whole 11th Doctor grief for uh, Amy and Rory arc is pretty good, it's the first episode after um, Angels Take Manhattan, and the Paternoster Gang is okay, you know, I've never really felt anything for the Paternoster Gang, they're okay, but you know, still pretty good. Sixth place, Voyage of the Damned. We're getting onto some pretty amazing episodes now. Um, Voyage of the Damned, it's a pretty cool setting, it's pretty interesting with the whole space titanic, it shows the very sci-fi side of this story. Um, Astrid is a very um, annoying and whiny um, companion, she wasn't really needed that much, and I wasn't sad at all when she died to be honest. Loads of people seem to like her, um, I can't remember who she's played by actually, I know she's quite famous though, um, let me know in the comments, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, basically she's not amazing and she's quite an annoying companion actually. Um, but it's, you know, it's a fun adventure story at its core, and it's an okay villain, I suppose, but yeah, it's alright. Fifth place, The Time of the Doctor. This is a story I've had very mixed feelings on the past few years. I watched it first and I loved it, it was my favourite Christmas special, then I thought it was quite bad, and now I think it's good, but not amazing. 
Um, it's pretty overrated, to be honest. The plot doesn't make sense at the first 20 minutes of the story at all. It doesn't really start to go anywhere until we actually get to Trenzalore. Um, and on, the whole thing with on Trenzalore, the Doctor making toys for everyone and kind of becoming Santa, that's that's pretty cool, actually. And we can kind of see how Christmassy it is as well. It, it's pretty awesome. Um, a very emotional send-off for the 11th Doctor as well. Like, this is the perfect wrap to his entire sort of era, you know, it it's kind of encompasses all of the elements of it, it's pretty awesome. And the villains are quite cool, the wooden Cyberman is stupid, but we have loads of 11th Doctor villains, we've got Weeping Angels, Dalek, Cybermen, Silence, even the Time Lords are there, you know, every everyone is there, and it's kind of just a very fitting send-off for the 11th Doctor. Alright, fourth place rev resolution, let's go. Chibnall's only Christmas slash New Year special, and it was very good actually. They made the Daleks scary again, which is what I loved. In some of the previous Dalek stories, the Daleks feel very forced and not that scary, but the reconnaissance Dalek is amazing. The plot is filled with twists and it's very rooted, you know, it doesn't meander anywhere, it's like proper solid plot. The 13th Doctor is much better, we have a lot of character development with a darker side, which is what I like, and it's just a fun, action-packed story. Yeah, I, I like this. Third place, The End of Time Part 2. This is an incredibly sad story, may I add. It's the 10th Doctor's Farewell, and you can just see it, it, it's just really, really sad. The ending scenes are so good, and they're no, not drawn out at all. I will admit, they, they are a bit long, but I mean, who cares? It's the 10th Doctor going back to see his friends, and that's what I like. It's really, really cool. Um, the Wilfred Mott twist is amazing and awesome. I was just so shocked when I heard him knock four times. And the final showdown between the Master, the Doctor, and the Time Lords is amazing. This is like the end game of the RCD era, and it's incredible. It is so, so good. Second place, A Christmas Carol, the 2010 Christmas special, the 11th, the 11th Doctor, and Stephen Moffat's first one, and they did it really well. It's so, so good. It's a brilliant retelling of, obviously, you know, the book by, I think it's Charles Dickens, A Christmas Carol, um, and it gave me awful memories of studying that text in English, which I really don't like. Um, anyway, yes, uh, it, it's also very sad, the... Um, the girl, I can't remember her name, but like she to have a certain amount of time left. That is, um, that's a pretty cool storyline, I think, actually. And it's very timey wimey. The Doctor like going back and altering history. It's, it's a pretty cool story, actually. And the Eleventh Doctor is amazing. He shines so so much. He's much better than he was in Series Five, and he will only get better in Series Six and Seven. So there we go. First place, though, Twice Upon a Time, my favorite Christmas special my second favourite story of all time, and my second favourite Twelfth Doctor story. This is the send-off of my favourite Doctor, and it's amazing. It is so... Um, <laughs> that's like the only word I can use to describe this. It is awesome. It's an amazing send-off for the Twelfth Doctor. It's a really cool idea with the sort of glass silhouette being Bill, um, who actually isn't really Bill. It's really strange. Um, the multi-Doctor... Um, story aspect is amazing as well. We haven't really had one of those in a while since Day of the Doctor, and David Bradley's first Doctor was incredible. I've always been a fan of the first Doctors, and I think he was very underrated. I'm glad to see him, you know, have David Bradley play him. He definitely is worth of playing the first Doctor, I think. And the regeneration, the whole regeneration scene, that five minute long thing with the heaven sent music in the background, it's it's just amazing. It's so, so good. This is one of the best Doctor Who stories of all time, in my opinion. So, I hope you've enjoyed the, watching the, this video, everybody. Feel free to share your rankings down in the comments below, and just comment on any other video ideas you have in mind. You know, I'm open to suggestions at the moment. I'm kind of struggling for ideas, actually. I do have lots of plans, and I am sorry for the lack of videos. I will try to do some more, including some Christmas special reviews soon, and maybe some more of my fan series after Christmas, maybe in the new year, because right now, like I said, I'm very busy. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's fairly long video, I've just reached 14 minutes now on my recording, so I'm going to go now, but um, Merry Christmas everyone, and yes, I will see you when I do another Christmas special review. Goodbye.